Hey YouTube, so I'm now at the start of week four of my Achilles tendon rupture recovery. As you may already know, I'm going through the non-operative slash conservative route. Um, and if you want to know all the details about that, click above to go back to week one where I run through how the injury occurred and the reasons I chose uh, the non-operative route versus surgery. Now, um, it was an event for week three for me. Um, so I'm only just starting week four now. If you look at my series of videos, when I write week one, it's the start of week one, start of week two, etc. So even though this is titled week four, it's actually the start of week four. Um, in the final, the last week, if you remember, um, when I gave an update, I said that my surgeon, the new guy I went and saw privately, said I was ready to start weight bearing. And I was really surprised how early in the piece he wanted me to start weight bearing. And he said within the next week I might be off crutches. So at the time I was a bit skeptical because I'd never heard of uh, anyone doing that so early, but I did a bit of research after that and apparently it's quite common for people to start weight bearing really early in that third week um, to start, at least put partial weight on and slowly wean yourself off crutches. In fact, one of the major studies by UWO, which is even bigger than the Dr. Thaddle study I, I talked about in my previous videos, um, in that one, they, did, they assessed 144 patients around that number, and that they also concluded that there was no difference between the operative route and the non-operative route, provided the non-operative patients also did early weight bearing and early range of motion. So um, I also checked with my physio, who's very good at um, you know, looking at all the research, and he also, he also said when he's treated people non-operatively in terms of helped them with their... Um, recovery uh, they've also started um, non weight bearing very early as well so I've got some great reassurance but before I had a chance to even try to do that I had an unexpected event the day after that meeting with the surgeon and that was that I fell um, which was just, uh, basically I was on my knee scooter I was reversing back slightly I was actually in the waiting room at the hospital it's a long story but to cut, cut, to cut a long story short um, as you know I've been going to a new private uh, surgeon, um, but I already had the appointment with a public surgeon in place the next day, so I thought, why not go one more time to see what he has to say, and then I'll stop going. Um, but when I was in the waiting room and I was reversing out, I, I saw someone I knew and I was going to rush to quickly talk to them, and I, I wasn't going that fast, but I reversed out and something happened, the scooter wobbled, I fell, and I landed on my um, injured uh, foot. Um, now, I had the boot on, so... I'm hoping it held my foot in that plantar flex mode, but it definitely would have had some sort of stretch as I landed and got back on the scoop, but there was a lot of pain. Um, it didn't feel like a re-rupture, and I've been told that you can't re-rupture at the two and a half week mark because it's already ruptured, there's nothing to rupture. Um, but there's no doubt I did some damage because I had a lot of pain that day. Um, it went away the next day, but I still had a lot more swelling. It was quite tender to touch the area, so I was really disappointed in myself because I was making great progress and then that little simple incident occurred. Um, the, the positive of it, however, is that it made me realize that I need to slow down. You know, for those of you who saw my video on all the mobility aids, you just, I was doing some really silly things like showing you guys a knee scooter with one, while I was standing on one leg, and you know, I was starting to get very um, confident with my, my crutches at times in my own house where there's only one or two steps, I'd go, through, go, go up two steps in one go, and, I was just doing some really silly things. Um, I was just getting too confident, I guess, and this was a really good wake-up call to take it easy, take it slow, because if that happened later in the process, like a couple of months down the track, I could have potentially re-ruptured and started from day zero again. But fortunately, it happened early, and it gave me that wake-up call I needed, and ever since then, I'm super careful. I don't, um, I don't even hop anywhere unless I'm actually holding onto something before I'd be hopping around everywhere. Um, and you know, when I put the eye walk on, I would, I strap it all up. Unlike my mobility aids video, uh, that I shared last week where I showed you one example where I don't always strap it. I just kind of hold it. So, um, it, I, it, I'm looking at the positives of it, but it's still a bit disappointing and I hope it's not going to lead to any slowdown in my recovery or any complications later. But, um, the surgeon that I saw that day, um, from the public hospital, did say I just aggravated, give it a few days, and he's right. Over the few days, it did go back to normal. Um, and when I saw my um, my actual private surgeon today, uh, he also said um, it looks good. But I'll come back to that because I'm going to talk to you all about how my appointment with the surgeon went uh, today because that's an interesting part of the update. But one thing I wanted to mention, though, was that last visit I did at the public hospital because I knew I was going to go private from this point on. Um, 
I'm glad I made that decision because this uh, specific doctor told me, he goes, oh, I don't want you doing any physio until you get to the eight week mark. And then um, he's like, after eight weeks, then we'll start doing stuff. And then I thought to myself, well, that's very old school because all, all the new research is pointing towards you must do early mobilization, early range of motion. Um, that's how you get the same rupture rate as uh, surgically uh, treated patients. So I'm glad I'm not going down that route anymore. Or I'm not seeing that doctor anymore. But um, uh, yeah, that was, that was it for, for him. Uh, so always ask your doctors that, that question, you know, what is their protocol, especially in the first eight weeks to 12 weeks, but then you'll get an idea of what kind of surgeon he is and how good he is when it comes to conservative treatment or how informed he is on the latest studies and, uh, and, and technology as well. Now, um, so after that, it also gave me a wake-up call to start getting off the crutches because the longer you're non-weight-bearing, the more risk there is that you fall. And I realized, well, even though I'm gonna be more careful now, I do need to listen to my surgeon and get off the crutches and start partial weight bearing. Because the quicker I'm off them, the less chance I'm gonna have another fall. And so for, from about Sunday, um, so I lost about half a week as I tried to recover from that fall. Um, so the last three days, I've been partial weight bearing um, with the crutches, just walking on my boot, um, as much pressure as I can tolerate before there's a bit of pain. And, and it's doing okay, you know, um, it's getting better, but it's just, you know, I'm just going through the motions and I'm hoping one day it'll click and I'll, I'll, be, I'll realize that I don't, I can drop one cut crutch and then one day I drop both crutches and I'll be walking um, or hobbling around with the boot, but I'm not at that stage yet. So that was good, so I'm, I'm going through that process. So I'm happy about that. Um, I also want to mention that when you go partial weight bearing, remember everywhere you go is touching the ground, um, your boot, um, so if you like, I don't know, if, you, if you're one of those people who sleep with the shoes on your bed all the time, then you probably won't care. But in my house, we generally don't wear shoes in the house. Um, so, um, although this is an exception, obviously, I can't get away with this, but in the bed um, is one area where I don't want this boot going around, where it's considering I know where it's been during the day. And therefore, I use this little kind of shower cap or boot cover, I don't know where it came from. I think it is a shower cap, which I got from maybe an airline on one trip. Um, uh, but I'm sure you can find it in a chemist. I just wrap that all around the base of the boot and that's how I go to sleep. So that's just a little tip for those of you who are like me, you want to keep your sheets clean and you don't want all the messy stuff from the day uh, coming into your bed. So I want to give you that tip. Um, I also want to give you another tip and I only started doing this in the last day um, because in the first few days when I was going on crutches when I was partial weight bearing, the boot is such a thick sole um, compared to your sneaker, which is like maybe that big, you end up going really high and down. It's like you're on this, um, some roller coaster. Every time you go on the crutches, you're really high and you come down again. And it was kind of uncomfortable when I read about people using what's called an even up sole. And I decided to buy one. So the way it works is if this is your sneaker, you put this even up sole, um, this black part on top. It's pretty easy to fasten. You know, it's just a simple, strap here which um you know you put you put it around your you, you put it around your shoe you just put, put the front pull up the back and then fasten the velcro and it stays on your good foot and sorry it's my phone saying lower battery let me just get rid of that screen um so that gives you much more width uh or depth i, sh I should say in your good foot so it evens your platform when you're walking and straight away today which is the first day i used them it was so much easier to walk um, so you're not going up and down, you're actually staying at the same level. So it's obviously good for your hips. And I actually think it's gonna, it's actually improved my walking um, and probably accelerated my chance of get, getting to partial weight bearing. So I highly recommend it. Um, it cost me about $39 in Australia plus $10 delivery um, uh, from the company. Just type in even up in Google uh, and I'm sure you'll find it. And as always, it's probably cheaper in the States. Uh, but it's definitely worth getting and uh, it's made a big difference uh, to my walking. And then when you're off the crutches as well, when you're walking on, you won't be bouncing up and down. You'll just be walking on the same level. So I recommend that as well. Um, the other thing worth noting is when you do start using the even up, um, you're much higher now. So you need to adjust your crutches. Don't forget what I talked about on my mobility aids, battle of the mobility aids video, uh, which I posted last week. Make sure you adjust your crutches correctly. So as a quick tip, again, because you may forget, this needs to be around three fingers below your shoulder when it's standing next to you. And then when, you when you're hanging your hand down, 
like this, make, uh, you can't see it now, make sure your wrist is in line with this bar. And that's how you know you're in the right spot. Um, and I had to increase the height of all my crutches to um, assist with using that even up platform. And then when I get home and I'm not wearing any shoes, um, apart from my boot, I then have to adjust it down or use a different set of crutches, which I'm doing right now. So just be aware of that as well. Uh, now let's go to the surgeon appointment that I had today. Um, so I went, the reason I, I wasn't meant to see him today, I was meant to see him in three weeks from last week, um, but I booked in to see him to get peace of mind after that fall. I was worried I may have gone back to day zero. Um, he assessed it and he basically said, look, your tendon's still there, there's no gap. Um, so he thinks it's going okay. You know, obviously I'm, it was forming and maybe there's a little bit of a tear. Um, so that was positive to hear that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, he said, you know, continue to go on and get, get off your crutches. So I, I, I want to continue to work on that. And I'll see him in two weeks time where we're going to start taking those wedges out in my boot. Remember, we've got a three centimeter wedge. It's going to come down to two centimeters, then one centimeter, then zero over the next, uh, one, uh, once we start taking wedges out in two weeks time. Um, I asked him a number of questions, which I'm going to let you know. I'm going to tell you the questions I asked him and what he answered with. So one of the first questions I asked him was, are we ever going to do an ultrasound? Um, even in the future, eight weeks down the track, I read about people getting ultrasounds to double check the tendons there and working. And he said, no, he doesn't do it. He goes, if you really want to do it, I'll do one for you. I'll get one done for you. But um, in the end, you know, the ultrasound or an MRI will, might even show it's still ruptured at eight weeks, but I will overrule that by doing a clinical examination. So he's of the opinion the ultrasound doesn't make a difference, but I'm probably going to push for one at the eight week mark before I start strong physio because... I just want to have peace of mind. Um, I asked him about the even up shoe. He's cool with that. He, he agrees that, that that's that's good to use. Um, wh one thing before I forget, just what with the even up shoe, just be aware when you are hopping, it's not as stable. So you just got to be a bit more careful. Just, just want to point that out. Um, healing long, I asked him, what are the chances? And he said it should be a low chance, but it does happen. But it often happens to people who are incorrectly put in a boot. Uh, they're putting the boot at 90 degrees at the start. Um, and therefore, or they're, they're, they're slow to get to the hospital and so they're not in the plantar flex position early enough and they're the guys who tend to have a longer healing tendon. Um, so he seems to think it's a very low probability it happens. Um, I asked him what happens, worst case scenario, if it does happen to me, um, and he goes, you gotta do surgery. And I said, well, what if I don't wanna do surgery? Can you live with a long tendon? And his uh, answer was, you can, and a lot of older people do. Um, it could give you some pain when you're going upstairs, etc. but he said, you know, it depends how long it is, but you know, it'll probably affect your ability to have that explosive speed. So if you're playing touch football and you want to run through a gap, or if you're in America, if you're playing NFL and you want to run through that gap, um, you won't have that explosive speed off that foot if you do heel long. So obviously, you know, it's a big risk and I don't want that to happen. And as I said in my last video, the one of the main ways to prevent that, we already started well by being in plantar flex position with the foot, but the other way to prevent that is not stretching your tendon until after eight weeks. You can do range of motion, but don't ever go past the neutral level where it's stretching the tendon. Um, always do range of motion below. And I'll show you my range of motions very soon as well. So, um, so that is a concern, but um, I want to know what he said about that. I also asked him about re-rupture risk um, because I've heard so many stories about people who they come out of the boot and then suddenly they're walking up a hill and they re-rupture. And that would be so devastating. And uh, it's something which I'm sure we're all dreading um, if that ever was to happen. And he said that typically happens to people who aren't doing early mobilization and range of motion or aren't doing, you know, getting weight bearing, aren't weight bearing early either. You know, you've got to get that tendon working now. Um, people who keep it stiff, you know, plastered up or whatever, or um, not doing anything to you know, eight weeks or 12 weeks are uh, more at risk of that kind of freak re-rupture. So hopefully the regime that he's giving me will work, but I guess we'll see. Um, and then I also asked him about the range of motion. He, he told me he only wants me doing, getting the towel, I'm gonna show you this in a sec, and going up and down. I asked him, is it just going down and let it relax back up? Or do you actually want me to go down and move it up? And he said, I want you to move it down and up. And he said, don't worry, you won't be able to go past neutral because you're, it's just too stiff. You won't be able to even if you want to try to with the towel. So he's saying, you know, move it down and move it up to neutral. Move it down and move it up to neutral. I asked him, what about the other ones about going side to side and 
tokers. He goes, you can do them if you want, but he doesn't actually think they're as relevant as the down and up getting the tendon working. I'm doing all of them and, and I will show you soon. And the other final question I asked him was, my, my ankle's quite swollen. Um, do I need to use ice? Um, and to get it down, he goes, not really. Um, it's probably more, uh, you can actually get rid of that just by putting your, elevating your foot. Your foot. Um, most of the swelling won't go away until your calf muscles are getting back, in, back on track. Now, um, that's a long update, so sorry about that. I wanna quickly show you the range of motion I'm doing um, now at this stage, just so you know exactly what's going on. So I'm just gonna pull this camera down to this level where I hope you guys can see. Now, I'll quickly undo my boot. Now, when I undo my boot, I always um, do it like a ski boot where I fold it here so you don't lose your straps. I normally do these range of motions on a bed so my, my leg is hanging as opposed to on a normal chair because I find it's just too close to the ground. Now, as I've said in my last one of my last videos, I'm really careful. So when I take my foot out, I always take it out in a planter flexed mode, pointing down. I'll, I'll move this sheet out of the way so you guys can see the background. And then, so this is my injured foot, obviously. I'm keeping the socks, normally I take the socks off. I think it's good to take the socks off. Um, but I normally, I'm just keeping it on for the video because no one ever wants to see other people's feet. Um, so the, the one, that uh, range of motion exercise that my surgeon wants me to do, and he says it's the most important out of all of them. He doesn't even care if I do the other ones. So get this towel, I'll put it under it, and then I, I'll try to, see, hopefully you guys can see this, um, but I'm just gonna press down now with some, and, resi and I resist with the towel, and, and then I kind of let go and let my foot get, get down and plantar flex. Then I'll go back up again slightly, back to neutral. I, I generally stay less than neutral because I'm a bit paranoid. But now I'm gonna push down again and then going back to neutral. And I do that about 15 times. So basically you should be doing five minutes every hour. That's what they say in all the research. So it's, it's obviously hard to get that time, but I'll at least do this one three times a day. And so I'll do that 15 reps, just doing that up and down, up and down, up and down. Then I'll get rid of the towel. Um, and then I'll just do the same thing, but without a towel, I'll go down, up. See, I, as you can see, I don't go to neutral. I'm just a bit worried at this stage. I don't have the confidence for it, but I'll do this as well 15 times, 15 reps. And then once that's finished, I'll then go, I'll, I'll put it down in plantar flex mode and I'll go left, right, left, right again 15 times each side so 30 times if you're counting each one of them one two three four for example and then the final one i do is i squish my toes you may not be able to see that down and then i try to get the toes up by, by staying in a plantar flexed mode so down up down up down up down up and i do that 15 times um, I do those, and I generally do about five minutes of it, and then at the end, when I've finished, I generally just give, I just give the feet a nice little massage, like a bit of a squeeze, because I just find, you know, they've, they've had a, gr a tough time in the boot, and sometimes it helps us to make it feel better, but obviously I don't go anywhere near the tendon. And I also um, give my calf a bit of a squeeze as well. Um, the, the calf and the, and the front of your foot, your leg because it's in a boot the entire day um, and just 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 giving a bit of a massage around these areas I think uh, it's just good for blood flow um, and you know there's always risks around DVT so anything to um, you know get the get the blood circulating through through your legs so that's an example of what the range of motion exercise I'm doing right now as I said the towel one is the only one that my surgeon really wants me to do the other ones I'm doing just from what I've learned online and seeing what other people are told to do. Um, it doesn't hurt to do them, so why not do them? Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at. So my next uh, surgeon visit is in two weeks where I hope to take the wedge out. Um, and in the meantime, I wanna keep trying a partial weight band, getting off the crutches. So uh, until then, I'll, uh, I'll give an update if there's anything new uh, to mention, but until then, I'll see you guys later. Thanks, bye.